Drafting with Newmont. All right, here we are again for another Constructed with Newmont. This time, Pioneer again, but this one is quite the brew. Uh, apparently, this was very similar anyways to a list that uh, took down a Japanese tournament uh, here in Pioneer, and it is quite the combo deck. Um, that isn't to say you can't still just win with beatdown plans with like Glorybringer and whatnot, but the main gist of this deck is getting a Possibility Storm. Let me bring that up for you. Getting a Possibility Storm down and then casting any of the adventure creatures. Uh, and so what happens is when you cast the adventure creatures, uh, specifically one that's a sorcery, because the entirety of your deck um, aren't instants except for Enter the Infinite, what happens is Possibility Storm on the battlefield. You cast the Adventure Sorcery. The only target for Possibility Storm in the deck that shares a type with it is now Enter the Infinite. With Enter the Infinite, you draw your entire library and then put one card back, one card being Borborygmos Enraged. Then, because you have Walking Ballista, you cast Walking Ballista for zero, which triggers the Possibility Storm again, and puts Borborygmos engaged, uh, rather enraged, onto the battlefield, and from there you just discard all your lands and kill the opponent. So, it's a crazy combo deck. Um, really, you just have to kind of watch it to, to make sense of it, but uh, like I said, you can still very easily just win with, you know, playing out some random creatures as well but uh hopefully in the league i get to show you guys how it works because it is a doozy stay tuned all righty here we are for round one of this pioneer league with the possibility storm deck my hand is quite awkward but i think i'm going to give it a shot here we are on the draw but we might have a uh if we're lucky turn three possibility storm and then maybe win from there Do need to find one of our adventure creatures, though, to go off. That's a good sign. I like seeing double forest start from the opponent. Means their interaction might not be all that great. Ooh, and we did find a Merchant of the Veil. Uh, so Merchant of the Veil is a sorcery, or rather an instant. And so what that means is that there's only one other instant in the deck, and that instant is Shared Summons. And Shared Summons goes and finds two creatures. The two creatures that it can find can have the adventure mode on it. And so, uh, well, anyways, this looks like a game where we might be able to pull it off. So here's to hoping. Jamming the possibility storm. Come on, baby. Don't kill me, OP. Remember, this works for both players. So now their hour of promise is going to turn into a different sorcery and they just hit a Nissa's pilgrimage here so now we win next turn as long as i don't draw my enter the veil this turn i win perfect all right so now watch we get to haggle possibility storm triggers it goes and find the only other instant in the deck shared summons shared summons goes and find two creatures both of them being um Sorcery adventure creatures like Love Struck Beast and Rose Thorn Acolyte. Then I cast that sorcery adventure. It goes and finds the only other sorcery in the deck, Enter the Infinite. With Enter the Infinite, like I said, I draw the entirety of my deck and then put one card back on top. And that one card is Borborygmos Enraged. Now, with the only card on top being Borborygmos en Enraged, I can cast any creature, such as Walking Ballista, so it works even if I have no mana, and I get Borborygmos Enraged onto the battlefield. And now, with Borborygmos on the battlefield, I get to discard all the lands that I just drew, because remember, I drew the entirety of my deck, and I get to kill the opponent that way. Wow. Game one, and we already did it. Perfect. I I'm glad you guys could see at least one time that the deck is working. The original build of the deck was a lot less refined. It had a lot of Planeswalkers in it, um, for example, and it didn't have like any Veil of Summers in the sideboard, which I, think, which I think is just obviously wrong. Versus Mono Green Ramp, I don't really think we have much of a sideboard. I think we're just going to run it back and uh, try to do the same thing. Okay, here we are for Game 2 with the Possibility Storm deck. 
Don't have the storm in hand, but we do have just like a normal, natural, pretty good ramp hand, which I think I'm going to keep. Opponent has a similarly rampy hand. Ooh, a pithing needle. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that does. Because... Oh, I guess that turns off Borborygmos, doesn't it? All right. So we might just be on the beatdown plan here. Which, not the easiest thing, but it is very possible. Again, we can just play like Bone Crusher Giants and uh, um, Dragons. Although that's a lot of land. Hmm. That is a lot of mana sources. Looks like I'm going to need to bring in Emberith Shieldbreaker as well. Ooh, a Thought Knot Seer. Okay. Glory Bringer off the top would be amazing. So it looks like if we go to a game three, I'm going to want to bring in these Shield Breakers at the very least. Love Struck Beast. Okay. It's not the worst draw. Make a 5-5. Five, five. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Just dumping out random dirtle creatures. Looks like we're a green ramp deck or something. Tireless tracker. All right. No fourth land from the opponent, though. Found another love struck beast. Let's go ahead and bash in for five. Oh, I'm actually a little bit surprised they're double blocking here. I'm going to go hit kill uh, the Thought Not Seer over the tracker. We know they're missing lands. Ooh, and that's a good draw. Let's see, I have access to seven mana. So we can make one of the 1-1s one -ones first. And then just play out two 5-5s five -five since we have a bunch of 1-1s one -ones already on the battlefield. This is actually pretty funny. Like I said, this deck is fully capable of just winning by playing out random dorks. Though the possibility storm win is obviously much more fun. Castle Garen Brig, yeah, get a food or whatever, a clue. Another love struck beast. Alright, so I think we just go ahead and bash in with everything here. We don't really care if they kill one of my one ones. Wait, was that four love struck beasts in a row? I think it might have been. That's kind of crazy. I almost feel bad for the opponent. <laughs> uh, they're like, what? Yeah, I, I think I drew four Lovestruck Beasts in a row or something. After they look at, looked at my hand with Thought Nuts here. Can you survive, opponents? Hour of Promise. Okay. I don't think you can make any zombies here. Oh, but you have enough deserts. Never mind. You get two zombies. Okay. And two Shrine of the Forsaken. So odds are they're going to play something huge next turn, which means I just need to attack with everything, and they're going to go triple chump on the 5-5s. Five so Glorybringer would win, for example. Darn. Didn't get there. All right. The old right-click attack all. They have to block all the 5-5s. Five so they still take 4. They're going to go down to 3. Uh, yeah, I think I might as well just play out the Rose Thorn then. With them being only at 2 life. I mean, they can like Ulamog or something here, right? I guess they could Ugin. Oh, shoot. Maybe I shouldn't have played out. Yeah, shoot. I shouldn't have played out the Rose Thorn. So, they go minus three here. Wipe the board. And then I need to draw, like, Rose Thorn Acolyte. Oh, sorry, not Rose Thorn. Um, what do you call it? Walking Ballista or Glorybringer.
Yeah, I need to draw like land glory bringer off the top. I think that's the only way I can win. Oh, maybe they just have Ulamog and they're going to kill me anyways. If they kill two of my lands here, we'll just concede, obviously. Nice. GG. That's pretty funny, though. That is certainly a funny one. So, Pithing Needle. So, we do bring in the Shield Breakers. Uh, I don't think we bring in Ratchet Bombs. Could bring in Rex Sages. Oh, Rex Sages are pretty good, too. I guess Shield Breakers do double duty, though, because they're also the Adventures. Probably don't need these. What? What, do we, what don't we need? I guess we don't need the Acolytes so much. Hell, it might even be worth it just bringing the Rex Sages, too. Got some carry added, are probably okay. All right, let's go to game three. Okay, game three. Round one of this Pioneer event. Cannot keep a hand with Enter the Infinite, unfortunately, so it's Mulligan. No. Hmm. Doesn't matter if you have Borborygmos in hand, but not having a green source here is pretty awkward. Kind of think I need to go down to five, as bad as it is. All right, and then we'll just pitch two lands here, I guess. Not the best, but so be it. Find the stomping ground, turn one. Probably just shoot them for two, turn two, and then play a four, three, turn three. Pretty unexciting overall. Ooh, they have the Grazer. Land pass. Uh, actually, I guess with this much mana and them having a Grazer, I should probably just haggle, try to find a uh, Llanowar Elf or something. But not looking very good for us this game. As they continue the ramp, land and carry added now. Go ahead and play out the 4 3. Thought not seer on gas. And by gas, I mean air. That's right, my hand is awful. <laughs> There's the Pithing Needle, so that's going to name Borborygmos, but it's no big deal right now. We don't even have any of the combo pieces anyways. Oh, Shield Breaker's not awful. Notably, Thought Not Seer is not an artifact. wonder if they even try racing. Oh, okay, we're going to trade. Nice. Did not expect that. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and play out another giant, I suppose. And I don't actually think I need to kill their Pithing Needle yet. They got nothing going on. It's good for us. So we'll go land. Attack for four. All right, chump with the grazer's fine. Let's play out the merchant. Kill the pithing needle. And then we can start rummaging lands away with merchant. Okay, they played a land. They have two cards in their hand. Six mana right now. No plays. Let's go ahead and rummage. Attack for two, or sorry, attack for four. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and run out the Shield Breaker, too. Instead of looting. Maybe that's incorrect, but they're not doing anything. They need one more mana for Ugin. What do they have for seven? Ooh, a World Breaker. Okay. Well, that's going to halt any aggression that I have now. So, we really just need to find Possibility Storm and then a Adventure. So let's go rummaging. That is the adventure, so we probably need to hold that in our hand, I would think. Maybe? No, we can play this out. Let's play the Stomping Ground untapped, and then we can rummage again. Depending on what they do this turn. I mean, if they just jam Ugin and minus three, we probably lose, but... Okay, Cycle Desert. So I'm going to guess they don't have Ugin in their hand, because they probably would have just played out the Desert to guarantee they can have it the following turn. Rex Sage. Okay, that's fine. So they're Hellbent right now, so we have a really good chance of... Uh, well, maybe not a really good chance, but somewhat of a chance of winning. I think I just dig for the Possibility Storm and go for it. Okay. Let's just attack. Again, beatdown plan is valid. We need to fade some of their big spells, but we do have at least a clock now. However small it is. Oh, looks like they drew something huge. Darn it. Did they draw Ugin? Ah, that's unlucky. Okay. So I guess they go minus five here, which means I can bone crush the Ugin at the very least. Hmm. I mean, we're still not in terrible shape, all things considered. Like, I get to go stomp the Ugin. Play out the bone crush. Might as well play out the elf. <laughs> The reason I would hold on to the Elf is so that I could uh, go Possibility Storm into Elf and then find a different creature, but... I mean... Looks like the opponent ripped back-to-back. -back. Yeah, they drew Ugin into World Breaker. Kind of hard to beat that. So, I'm gonna need to draw Possibility Storm into Adventure, like, this turn. Or Glorybringer into Glorybringer or something. Yeah, because this is, this is just a chump blocker. Oh well, they ripped two good ones. So it goes. Yeah, shield breaker doesn't do it. In fact, uh, I actually need to hold on to. Oh no, wait, that, I don't. They don't have any artifacts. No, I still think I have to hold on to it though. Four three is not super relevant, but the mana could be. Nope, needed to draw a possibility storm there. <sighs> so that will be game. All right, GG's. That's too bad. Was really hoping to win this match, but glad you guys could see the potential of this or what what this deck can do. Anyways, we were in a top deck battle, and the opponent. Happen to draw a little bit better. Obviously, their deck does have more powerful top end than us, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. GG's. Let's go to the second round. Here's round two of this Pioneer League with our spicy little uh, <laughs> Possibility Storm deck. This just looks like a normal red-green hand. I might even consider Lovestruck Beasting on turn one, but... It's probably not the best play. I think we just hold this for now. 
and go stomping around tapped and then next turn game tra or next turn yeah game trail reveal mountain play carry added got another green deck looks like we're gonna play against the counters oh yeah there's the possibility storm all right in fact what I might want to do here is just bide my time and instead play the walking ballista and shoot down their pelt collector and the reason for this is because I'm not going to be able to play Possibility Storm next turn anyways. So this way I get a pretty relevant creature off the battlefield. And then next turn we're going to go Possibility Storm. Or I could even wait a turn. It might even be better to go Possibility Storm and Love Struck Beast on the very same turn. I'm not going to block here. There's no reason to risk it. Especially if they're stuck on one mana. Yeah, I think we just wait. I think I just go land pass. So that way they don't get the Possibility Storm. I take the four and then win the following turn. Warrior's Lesson. Sure. So like some weird mono green devotion aggro. But with one green mana, it's going to be hard for them to do anything. Yeah, tap out. GG. So we go Possibility... Heart's Desire, cast Enter the Infinite, draw our library, put Borborygmos back on top, cast the last Walking Ballista, there's Borborygmos, cast the last Walking Ballista, get the Borborygmos on the battlefield, and then we get to shoot the opponent. <laughs> uh, this is great. What are you at? 20? Let me just deal 3 to you 7 times. Thank you very much. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. So good. So good. Alright, what are they? Green aggro nonsense poop? I guess I'd bring in Ratchet Bomb. They played a bunch of 1-drops. So... The only problem with Ratchet Bomb in the deck is that now Walking Ballista can actually hit Ratchet Bomb off of a Possibility Storm. Um, which means you might need to go off with instead 7 mana instead of 6. Maybe this was actually not a good idea to bring this into the sideboard. Anyways, let's cut a carry added and let's cut a merchant, I think. Or maybe we can just cut two merchants. Ramp seems good. Okay, here we go for game two of the second round of this Pioneer League with a very nice hand. Turn one elf, turn two ratchet bomb. Or rather, turn two, maybe even bone crush them. Depends what they do here. Oh yeah, we're probably going to bone... Well, I guess bone crushing the Surferon now might actually be better, eh? Proves to be more damage. Yeah, let's just stomp on the Ferron. And we're not blocking, so might as well attack for one. Barkhide Troll, okay. They're stuck on two mana. We're just going to play out our 4-3 here and pass. This will trade happily with either of their creatures. Now, I do need to find another, uh, another adventure card before I can win with Possibility Storm, so... We'll have to see what I want to do here. What they do here. Kessig Prowler, okay. I actually kind of like trading with the Barkhide Troll. And the reason for this is that because we have Ratchet Bomb, we can blow up all of their one drops. Looks like they had a Blossoming in Defense, though, to save their creature. I'm right, I'm at 10. Drawing the Borborogmos actually isn't a problem, but now I think I just need to run out the Storm and hope they don't kill me. They have eight on the battlefield right now. I could just be dead. 
They could also just have a way to kill the possibility storm, but I don't really have much of an option since uh, the trade didn't go through. So Scavenging Ooze, that is now a Kessig Prowler. Okay, that's not good enough to kill me. Aspect of Hydra, Blossoming Defense. All right, that's good enough to kill me. We'll take 10, we'll go to zero. We will go to a game three. Hmm. So I think what I need to do perhaps is maybe get some, hmm. Well, the only thing about adding like Anger of the Gods to this deck is you do hurt the Enter the Infinite. Because you don't want to, you don't want a possibility storm into one of those. Yeah, it's awkward. The possibility storm makes sideboarding really strange. Very strange. All right, well, we're on the play this time, so let's hope we can get him game three. Here we are for game three of this second round. Ooh, very close to a keep. We just needed one more land, and we can go, like, turn two carry added, turn three whatever, turn four storm, and go off. But going to have to mulligan that one. Much better six-card hand. Let's get rid of the ratchet. And I'm going to go ahead and play this turn one elf out. Oops. This might be a game where we just win with the creatures here. Definitely looks like it. Yeah, because I can go like Love Struck Beast into Bone Crush. And then play a 5 5 next turn. Oh, they kept a 1 lander? Yeah, that's nice for us. In fact, I might. Now, because they kept a 1 lander, let's just go Ramp Ramp and then Glory Bringer next turn might seal the deal. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I think it's safest just to start killing off their creatures. And I want to kill the experiment one because it can eventually uh, regenerate. Yeah, that, that's over now, if they don't have another land yet. Like now we just get to play... Or actually... We get to play Walking Ballista for three, shoot both of their 1-1s, one and then they scoop. Is the likely scenario here. And that's what I'm talking about. We can win with combo. We can also win with just by casting some solid red-green beats. Like, <laughs> that is totally a thing this deck can do. All right, I'm digging it. Let's go to the next round. Here is round three of this Pioneer League with our Possibility Storm deck. And we have quite the hand if we don't get thought C. Okay, phew, aggro. So we go turn one Mystic. Turn two, I'm probably just going to run out the Rose Thorn Acolyte if they don't kill my Mystic. Because that would lead up for a turn three possibility storm, turn four win. Seems good. Yeah, I'll take my two. Thought sees. Okay. Secrets are out, maybe. We'll see if they realize. <laughs> But again, we can just play a very fair game here and just run out some creatures. Like, our creatures are good versus um, mono black. I'd be pretty thrilled here if they just took, like, Bone Crusher Giant. Ooh, maybe they don't know what this deck does, and they're like reading the possibility storm, and they're like, hmm, what could this be? <laughs> All right, the storm is gone. And they have another one drop. Knight of the Ebon Legion, okay. Well, I think then we're probably just going to stomp the knight. Get it while it's good and attack for one.
Let's see, they have four cards left. So oftentimes they run like Smuggler's Copter, Castle Lockthwain. Doesn't look like they're the vampire version, though, if they're running the Blood Soaked. Walking Ballista, a fine draw. I am just going to play out the Bone Crusher Giant here. The Stomping Ground and Pass. I don't really have um, the necessity to ramp out here. All right, Swift End is fine. Like, I'm not under super pressure here. If they just, like, attack for two and play Murderous Rider, that's really solid for us. I've yet to have a game where I just draw Enter the Infinite and have it be a Stone Cold Dead Mulligan. Ah, oh, there's a Smuggler's Copter. Okay. And a Fatal Push. All right. Time to start developing out my lands again, I suppose. Although... Let's see, the Smuggler's Copter is going to attack me. Um, yeah, let's just play the Acolyte and pass. Acolyte blocks any of their ground dirtles. What do I get from the sideboard versus them? Rex Sage is like medium. Ratchet Bomb's pretty good. I don't know if you bring in Veil of Summers. You definitely bring in the Oozes. I wonder if Shield Breaker is just better than Rex Sage. All right, Copter in the red zone. What are they going to discard? Night Market Lookout. Haven't seen that in a while. It's good with the crew on the Smuggler's Copter, though. Another Smuggler's Copter. Okay. Well, let's hope we find another Possibility Storm rather fast. Um, I'm at 11 right now. Yeesh. Let's ballist on to shoot the blood soaked. And I guess attack for two. The hope is that they're only able to crew one of their copters this turn, as unless they drill one drop creature, it's going to be very, very hard to do that. Come on, Possibility Storm off the top for the win. Did you draw one drop? That's not good for me if you did. Ooh, I just noticed their deck's foiled out, except for that Thoughtseize. What are you doing with your life? All right, there's the Murderous Rider. The crew of the Copter. So I'm going to take three, go to eight. They discarded a Muta Vault. Scary. Is this a fatal push? Sure. Okay. So carry added would be, or not carry added. Um, possibility Storm is a win. Glorybringer would be good. Another carry added is pretty awful. Now it's probably ha it probably has to be a possibility storm off the top. I mean, I suppose I can just play out Glorybringer and block, but I mean, ugh. Hmm. 
All right, they're going to activate the castle, fall down to seven. I take three, I go to five, they get to rum it, or rather loot. They do have a one drop, all right. Love struck beast, that doesn't do it. We are just dead in the air to the copters. All right, GG, go next. Drew too much in the way of brickage. We were not getting there. All right, double ooze in. I think we can cut these merchants. Probably just bring in the shield breakers or veil of summers too. Can't be terrible. Again, the problem with bringing in veils is that uh, if I have possibility storm out, um. Bone Crusher Giant no longer finds shared summons, which is a win, so kind of awkward there. Ratchet Bomb also seems okay. I think I like bringing in the Ratchet Bombs more than the Veil of Summers. The Veils are more for counters than they are for the Black Decks. So let's go like this. Okay, let's go to the next game versus the Mono Black Aggro List. And I'm going to keep this hand. I mean, obviously very, very cold to a discard effect, but with this deck, you can't really afford to mulligan this type of hand. You just got to more or less hope that your opponent doesn't have it, so to speak. Fatal push on the elf is not that bad. I don't have a second red source for the uh, possibility storm yet anyways. So I wouldn't be able to cast it on turn three, currently. Kite sail free booter. That's fine. They get the possibility. That's actually really good for me that they get to steal the possibility storm because now I can get the possibility storm back to my hand when I want to. So we get to like just pass here. I mean, I probably end up killing their free booter end of turn just in case I draw another red source, but. That actually protects my possibility storm, which is really good. Okay, I'm going to fall down to 19 here, no big deal. I mean, even if I don't draw a red source, then I can just cast out the 4-3 as well, so. Not that bad. All right, let's go for it. Responses. Ah, okay, that's pretty good. Don't have any red, so. Yeah, I definitely need to find a mountain now. Okay. Nice. Getting a little bit color screwed here. Normally I wouldn't think Triumph would be that good of a card versus us, but here we are. Take two from the vault. Night Market Lookout into Night Market Lookout. Let's make a 1-1 one, one, and a 5-5. Five, five. I think we just need to play this out as defense. Like, keeping the Love Struck Beast for Possibility Storm makes sense, but... Glad they don't have a Smuggler's Copter to go with those mark outs, uh, markets. Yep, Thought Seize is fine. I almost wonder if they take Glorybringer here because of the position. It's 
kind of awkward because they lose to one card, but they also lose the other card. <laughs> Either way, I need to find mountains. And pray to God we don't draw into the or enter the infinite or whatever. Yeah, they took the glory bringer. I like it. And they do have a castle too. All right, that's actually one source of red. So Hmm. That's interesting. I think what I'm going to do here is attack for 5. And then Rose Thorn for mana. Rose Thorn for red and play the Bone Crusher Giant. And let's just turn into an aggro deck. Well, not aggro, but creature deck. Ooh, are they going to do multi blocks here? Wow, that's great. They're going to block with two Mutavolts and a Night Market. Holy moly. What a deal. That's absurd. Okay. Let's get red here. Let's play good old Bone Crushy. I am very surprised they did that. I guess maybe they had that third Mutavolt in their hand. Ooh, there's the Copter. Okay. Copter's good. Found ourselves a red source. So they tap the uh, Night Market to crew the Smuggler's Copter, and they do this end of turn just to uh, ping me for one. Yep, ping me for one with the crew. Attack and get a loot. What are they going to discard? What you got, OP? What do you have? Hmm. I thought I had brought in some of the shield breakers. I guess I didn't. I think I definitely need to bring those in if we go to a game three. Oh, this is a tough choice, apparently. Uh, okay. How was that a choice at all? What is going on? I guess they kill my elf. Or maybe they're going to bring something back. They could get back their freebooter before their Lilian dies. Nope, they killed my elf. Okay. Elf down, we drew a carry added. Let's attack Liliana, let's attack face. All right, let's get this possibility storm down. It's showtime, baby. This is not necessarily a win, I could just brick. Now remember, this goes for both players, so they can also do some nasty nonsense here. Are they going to crew the Mutavolt as well? That would put me down to six life. Okay. So I'm on a two-turn clock now.
pitches a swamp. Yes. Knight of the Ebon Legion turns into another Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right. Show me the adventure. All right. Well, creatures are not bad because this could turn into a glory bringer or something. Or ooze. Ooze is not bad. That represents a decent amount of life gain. Let's see what this carry added turns into. Hopefully a glory bringer. Carry added turned into another carry added. Okay. <laughs> so we'll attack for four. And pass. Still have a game here. Can start eating all of their graveyard creatures and gaining extra life with carry added. Or sorry, uh, ooze. I can already gain three life this turn. And then I have one, two, three. I have five creatures in my graveyard to eat later on. All right. It doesn't matter what they drew because it's going to turn into something else no matter what they do. So Fatal Push on the Ooze turns into Fatal Push. Okay, so they hit another push. And honestly, that's probably their only instant in the deck. So I wouldn't be surprised if Fatal Push in their deck can only hit Fatal Push. So we'll go ahead and exile their Freebooter in response. Go ahead and exile their Night Market Lookout in response. And we'll go ahead and just eat one of my own carry adds in response. So I'm up to nine. Then they're going to hit me for at least four here. Human can chump the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Okay, so I have two more turns. Maybe one more if they can hit something else. But on board, I have two more turns. Uh-oh. That's a brick, obviously. Let's just pass here. Okay. One more draw step. Crew the Smuggler's Copter, pings me for one, attack with Smuggler's Copter. It's going to put me to um, one. Doesn't really matter what I block with here. I guess I just block with the Bone Crusher Giant to make them invest mana, but again, it doesn't really matter. One draw step. Let's go, deck. <sighs> that is not good enough. Darn it. GG's. This doesn't count as casting it from our hand, so it doesn't trigger the possibility storm. And they can just crew the smuggler's copter. No! <laughs> All right. GG. Let's see. So I think we've gone to a game three every single time, but we're now one and two. Oh, no, that was in two games. Darn. Close. Well, let's finish it out. Hopefully we can finish off on a three and two. All right. All right. Here is round four. Match four with this Pioneer Possibility Storm deck, and we have a great hand. Could use one more mana dork off the top for the turn three Possibility Storm, but very easy keep. We'll go ahead and lead on the Mystic turn one. 
Swamp. Okay. No! Why the thought seizes? <laughs> Yikes. Well, presumably the opponent knows what we're doing. There goes the storm. All right, so we might have to play a fair game with creatures. The question is, do I want to cast out the Love Struck Beast just as a 5-5 five, five right now? And I think I'm going to. Obviously, if they kill Elvish Mystic, it's a little bit awkward, but we have plenty of other 1-1s one in the deck. I think this is a fine play. Nice. Okay, so we're playing against Zombies. And we did find ourselves another uh, ramp card, which is nice. So yeah, I think we're going to be playing a very fair game here where we just kill him with creatures. Because Carry added this turn. Next turn I can shared summons and go dig for like Glorybringer, Glorybringer or something to that effect. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we finally did it. We finally drew the shared summons. They can block here and then just uh, bring out, bring back the Renlin instead, but that eats up a lot of their mana to that, so I think this is obviously very worth. No possibility Storm win this time, friends. We're just going to have to go tutor for double glory bringer versus the mono black zombie deck. Call it good there. That's funny, though. Ooh, Nykthos. They're not going to do anything? I guess they know I have shared summons coming. Two, four, six. I mean, I can almost just hard cast Borborygmos. But let's get two good resilient... Like, like, let's get a Bone Crusher Giant here. And maybe like Walking Ballista or something. I don't even think I'm going to cast the Glory Bringer this turn, though. Because I think they're very obviously holding up a removal spell. That was another great draw. So let's just go to combat. I'll let them block. No blocks. Okay. Take five. Swift end. Sure. All right, that's fine. And then I can just play out Glory, or uh, rather Walking Ballista for three here. No problem. Rankle? Okay. What does that do? Nothing? Uh, are they just dead? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think they're just dead with this attack. I sacrificed the carry added. Oh, I would need to hit a land still, but. Oh, they made both players sacrifice a creature. So I could actually ping the Relentless Dead here in response, make them sacrifice their own rankle. Three, four, eight, nine, ten. Oh, but I win the game if I draw a land off the top. I also just put him to one. Yeah, this is fine. I'm going to let the ability resolve. It's too much upside. So we'll discard the end to the infinite because they already saw the possibility storm, so it doesn't matter. Sacrifice the carry added. And they just conceded. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they knew that I had the glory bringer and the bone crusher in my hand, so... I suppose that makes sense, but. Okay, let's go to sideboarding. Mono black. Let's get the oozes in. A lot of mono black running around, it feels like. Again, I don't think I want these Veil of Summers. Do I want Ratchet Bomb? I mean, maybe, maybe Veil of Summer is too good not to run. It's just so awkward. I don't know. When I put these in the sideboard, because they weren't in the original list, when I put these in the sideboard, I thought they would be a lot better, but 
if you're not bringing him in versus mono black, then what good are they really, you know? Yeah, I'm sure they're good enough. We can just cut some of the uh, merchants since fewer sorceries to, or sorry, fewer instants to hit for Veil with possibility storm makes sense. Game two here of this round. We are on the draw with a bad hand. We have Enter the Infinite and uh, no green sources. It's Mulligan. And a much better hand here. I think I'm going to bin the Walking Ballista. Keep the hand like this. Again, very fair hand. Uh, turn one Mystic off the top. Going to go ahead and cast it. As I don't have a double green anyways to play this and hold up Veil of Summer. So, makes sense to me. Fatal push, you got me. All right, let's play carry added pass. There's the relentless dead, sure. And we can go ooze. I'm going to play the stomping ground tapped. And we'll pass here, holding up our Veil of Summer. Nice. Got him good here. Get to Veil the Swift End. And now we get to shoot the Relentless Dead and then eat it with the Scavenging Ooze. So let's play the green source for that. Stomp the Relentless Dead. Trigger goes on the stack, but we get to eat it before that resolves. So let's go eat that. Eat that. And we might as well, for good measure, eat our Elvish Mystic since we're not playing anything else this turn. Make a nice little 5-5 five, five Uzi boy. And bash and crash. Underworld connections. That's way too slow, my friend. Way too slow. Oh, there's the possibility storm. All right. Well, how about we just win? Possibility storm. Love struck beast. Heart desire. Enter the infinite. Draw my entire library. Find Borborygmos, put him back on top, go find one of our walking ballistas, cast it for free, get the Borborygmos, and shoot our opponent from 14. <laughs> Success! Oh man, when this deck goes off, hot damn does it feel good. I mean, I think we were going to very easily win this game just with the uh, Scavenging Ooze, the Scavenging Ooze, the Lovestruck Beast, and the Bone Crusher Giant, but why not win immediately? All right. The final round, let's play for a three and two. Okay, here's the fifth and final round of this Pioneer League with our Possibility Stormer deck. Really nice hand here. We could just curve out turn one Llanowar Elf, turn two Rose Thorn, turn three Glorybringer. As our opponent is on another Desert deck, okay. So they might be slow, which is good. Ooh, that's even better, because now I don't need to play out the carry or the, rather the Acolyte for five mana on turn three. We just play the carry added. Oh, baby, we are just looking for that possibility storm to go off. But, I mean, turn three Glorybringer, turn four Glorybringer. Could just win. It looks like they're on the Golos deck. Yeah, for sure. Golos ramp. All right, let's start playing some 4 4 hasties.
Hour of Promise, yes. There's Field of the Dead in a Shrine. Things are getting a little bit sketchy for me now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, if they just have a an Ugin, we're going to have a bad time. Creature. That's not an Ugin, then. Elvish Rejuvenator? That's the best you got? Okay, never mind. I'm feeling a lot more confident now. Whew. Do not care about all those tutus. Sure. Double Rejuvenator. <laughs> You got it, buddy. Guy reach sanitarium. Yep, yeah, that's fine. To your heart's extent. I will attack you for eight in the air. Is that good? I will then attempt to stomp you in the face for two damage. All right. Turn five, lethal. And not even the uh, combo kill, just turn 5 lethal damage. Turns out when you play a 3 mana, sorry, turn 3, 4, 4, flying haste into turn 4, 4, 4, flying haste, things can uh, go well. Not really much to sideboard in versus them. The ratchet bombs could be brought in to kill their zombies, but if they're having, if they're getting zombies on the battlefield, then it's probably a little bit too late in the game anyways, so... Um, and honestly, I didn't show them anything, right? All they saw from me were Mystic, Carry Added, Glory Bringers, and Stomp. So, I doubt they're going to bring in anything to, like, stop a combo kill. I think we're just going to run it back. Okay, game two of the final round. And we have the Enter the Infinite in our opening hand. So, we're going to mulligan that one away. Ugh. I'm going to keep this, but this hand's really, really slow. Need to draw some mana dorks off the top. We probably just give the opponent way too much time with this particular hand. Uh, turn one grazer. Mana dork? No, okay. Blast zone, that's not super relevant right now. Yeah, man, turn one grazer, turn two Nissa's pilgrimage. They are doing a very good job of ramping here. Okay. That's good. That's definitely one of the cards we need. Turn three, Golos. Yikes. Here comes Field of the Dead or something. Yep, okay. They don't have Cascading Cataracts, though, so they can't activate the Golos quite yet. Uh, land number three and pass for me. I wouldn't be surprised to see them blow up the blast zone this turn. Just because I haven't done anything and I have the mystic on the battlefield. Oh, wait, do they have a world breaker? That'd also be very bad for us. No, hour of promise, okay. Yeah, my best bet is probably just to jam the possibility storm and hope I win. Ooh. Can I win? I take three this turn. Go to Okay, so yeah, we probably have one more turn. The notable thing here is that Bone Crusher Giant um, doesn't find shared summons because uh, it's already in my hand, so we might as well just fire off the Bone Crusher and jam out the storm. We can shared summons next turn and uh, go get like a Rose Thorn Acolyte and hopefully win from there if I'm not just dead. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine puts me to eight. Cascading Cataracts, activate the Golos. What do you got? What do you hit? No whammies. What do they hit? Rejuvenator, Jadi Afshoot, and a Forest. All right, I think we got them. 
<laughs> I think we got them. I think their mistake was not blowing up the blast zone that one turn on turn three when I just passed. Like, they know I had a bunch of five drops in my deck. Maybe they didn't know I had Possibility Storm. Oh, <gasps> no! Oh, wait, no, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Oh, wait a minute! Can I not shared summons? This doesn't work, because it tries to find a different instant. <gasps> oh, no! Do I actually lose? Oh, no, I might actually lose. I forgot. Shoot. You know what? I punted. I needed to cast the shared summons before the possibility storm. I think I just lost the game. I think I just lost the game. Oh, no! Oh, silly me! Yeah, I needed to have passed and not played possibility storm. Played the shared summons end of turn and grabbed the creature. Then... Oh, then did it. Oh, no. I just threw away the game. That feels so bad. Oh, well, a learning lesson to be sure. So, I did have the win there. I needed to go shared summons um, on the turn that I cast Possibility Storm. Shared summons for our two creatures. Um, like Love Struck Beast, Acolyte, whatever. Then cast Possibility Storm into whatever one of the creatures that I tutored up and we would have won. Damn it. Well, Mulligan 2-6 here. Alright, this is a keeper. Pitch the Borborygmos. Need to find some lands, so I'm probably going to go turn 1 Mystic, turn 2 uh, Merchant of the Veil, Haggle, pitch something. But this does look like a hand that can pot potentially win with just an aggro route as well. Nice, that's not bad. So let's haggle here. Pitching Bone Crusher. Nice, did find a land, okay. I mean, if I hit another red source next turn, I get to uh, turn 3 Possibility Storm and then potentially turn 4 win. Opponent is on two colorless lands. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Dang. It's a tapped land. That sucks. Well, any untapped land next turn with this hand is a win. Sure, that doesn't matter. Oh, I'm so sad I didn't win the last game, though. Foolish mistake. Foolish mistake. Let's make not make the same mistake again. I think I'm just going to cast the carry edit. I don't think there's much they can do with uh, five mana that would stop whatever shenanigans I'm doing. So Hopefully they just play their forest and play Hour of Promise or Golos or whatever. Yeah. All right, GG's. Oh, wait, I lied. If I draw exactly Enter the Infinite, I don't win. <laughs> Jinx. Jinx time. Don't do it. Okay, phew. All right, GG. Possibility Storm. Heart's Desire. Enter the Infinite. Draw my library. Find the Borborygmos. Put him on top. Cast Walking Ballista for zero. Get the Borborygmos. Nug the opponent for a multiple of three. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, we managed to pull off a three and two with this deck. And I think one or two of the games that I lost were, well, certainly to my own user error. But then there were a few games where we had just also lost to like some unluckiness, I feel like. Is this a real deck? I don't know. Is it fun in a new format? abso freaking lootly um, Is there room for innovation? Absolutely as well. 
I don't know. Maybe you can find a way to like shuffle Enter the Infinite back into your library if it's in your ha hand or something like that. Because, I mean, you saw it in one of the games. Uh, if you just naturally draw Enter the Infinite, that is the only time where it is truly a dead card. Uh, also, another thing, and this happened to me earlier when I was streaming, if the person like thought seizes Borborygmos out of your hand, you can no longer win with that combo because you have no way to shuffle your graveyard back into your library. So it's possible, um, and people were talking about this before, maybe like a Loaming Shaman in the deck is something worth it because you're running Merchant of the Veil, vale, so... You can like discard your board, or rather your Enter the Infinite if you if you draw it, and then maybe get it back with like Loaming Shaman or something to that effect. But uh, anyways, hopefully you guys in, enjoyed this particular league of Pioneer. Definitely the most uh, innovative deck I'll say that uh, I've played these last few weeks. But this was an enjoyable one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed.